Okay, thank you very much for uh, the invitation and uh, for introduction. So uh, yes, my talk will be about logarithmic resolution of singularities. It's a sort of twist which happened in recent years uh, to the usual uh, direction of resolution. Uh, in fact, uh, 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 I'll discuss maybe first step of this uh, uh, new uh, developments, uh, but uh, okay, let's uh, let's start. Uh, so, uh, oops. Okay. okay. Uh, so, uh, first of all, this is a, a joint pro project uh, with uh, um, Dan Abramovich and uh, Jarek Vlodarczyk. And um, so everything I'll tell about will be joint. Uh, references as follows. Uh, first of all, uh, Mm, it's paper from 17, Principalization of Ideals on Logarithmic Orbifolds. This will be the main paper I'll talk about. Uh, where a sequel, uh, which is uh, submitted, not published yet, is called Relative Resolution. In fact, our goal was to prove resolution of morphisms. Uh, but uh, the natural notion of smoothness where is logarithmic smoothness, and it was clear that one should go to logarithmic geometry to deal with it. And the first stage where actually the algorithm was developed was done in 17. So for simplicity, we'll talk mainly about 17, but uh, the real achievement uh, in this direction is resolution of morphisms. And uh, uh, also I'll briefly mention factorial uh, resolution by weighted blowings up. It will show up a bit. Uh, maybe it's also time to tell that a student of uh, Dan, uh, Minhao Quek uh, uh, already proved some uh, combination, developed an algorithm which is combination of these two. So uh, the state of the art is changing now. Okay, good. Uh, now uh, I decided uh, to spend a large part of this talk on classical resolution, uh, uh, both to explain the differences and new ideas and to compare to the old one and also we are now in the situation when uh, it's possible in uh, half an hour to describe main ideas of classical resolution. And, you know, I thought it's also worse to, uh, to spread this knowledge. Uh, so for simplicity, we always work with varieties of a field. This is not generality we work with in our papers, but uh, for the talk only varieties of a field of characteristic zero. You can think it's uh, complex. And the same works for analytic spaces, if you wish. Um, resolution of singularities uh, classically seeks to take an integral variety and find its modification, which is proper variational morphism, with a smooth source, yeah, Z result. Uh, Hironaka got Fields medal for his work in 64, where he proved that it exists in characteristic zero and any dimension. Uh, now, the, that work was extremely difficult and nobody dreamed to be able to explain it in half an hour. Uh, since then, a uh, large sequence of simplifications and clarifications happened and also strengthening of this uh, work. It started in 70s with works of Hironaka himself and uh, Giro. Uh, major simplifications and also we coined up notion of maximal contact, which I'll discuss uh, in this talk. And in 80s, 90s, Will Marior and Birsten Milman proved that actually it's not just existential, it's algorithmic, there is an algorithm, it's canonical, and uh, it's much more concrete. It can be done uh, by computers. And Vlodarczyk in 2005, in sense, uh, finished this line of research. Uh, he proved that it's better than canonical. It's compatible not only with automorphisms, it's compatible with any smooth morphism. If you are given Z prime to Z a smooth morphism, then one can construct a family of resolutions. So with uh, resolution of Z prime will be pulled back of resolution of Z. So just it's compatible with any smooth morphism, even not a tile, not uh, open immersion with any smooth. Uh, this is great because it automatically uh, gives equivalence for any group action, any group in characteristic zero is smooth. 
Uh, so number of applications increased uh, seriously because of uh, this and also uh, proof became simpler and simpler. You prove stronger claim and it's simpler to prove it. It happens in many inductive proofs. This is also uh, the case. Okay, and um, uh, after that, uh, until 17, nothing, uh, I would say, uh, principle uh, happened. And in fact, a curious thing was that uh, since Hironaka, all algorithms were very close one to another. So maybe technical description was very different, but the algorithm itself was the same, up to combinatorial details. So it was uh, all this time a very interesting question if wh why this happens, because all ideas were in the original Hironaka work and people just uh, played with these ideas or just there is no, no uh, anything else. So the first uh, canonical algorithm, which is different, uh, although he shares, it shares some ideas, uh, uh, was discovered in 17 and uh, it's a logarithmic thing. It's a logarithmic analog of uh, the classical. And it works in logarithmic settings. So one starts with uh, log variety, which is generically smooth and uh, six for a modification, uh, which is log smooth. And moreover, it turns out that this is possible to do with much stronger uh, functoriality. It's functorial with respect to all log smooth morphisms, a much larger class of morphisms, uh, as we'll see. Uh, a drawback is that one has to work with stacks and not only log smooth or lo logarithmic varieties. It was not expected when we started the project. It was one of discoveries which turned out to be important, not only technical obstacle, but also uh, it's beneficial. Uh, well, when in 20, we actually took the same algorithm and proved that it resolves morphisms. Again, if you are given morphism X to B, you uh, uh, of log schemes, it uh, modifies X. So what X res becomes log smooth over B. And it's uh, functorial in the same way with respect to log smooth morphisms to X, but it can fail <laughs> uh, when dimension of B is larger than one. Uh, however, the new ingredient uh, in uh, the paper of 20 is that uh, there exist, there always exists a modification of the base. So that after this modification, the algorithm does not fail. If dimension is uh, one or uh, zero and the base is log smooth, then you cannot modify it. So just uh, it's a particular case. But if dimension of B is, la is uh, larger than one, when maybe you first of all have to also blow up B and not only X. That's the reason why the algorithm fails. Uh, now our proof in the preprint is uh, only uh, existential. We prove that such H exists, but uh, we do not prove it is canonical. Uh, originally we expected that maybe it can be made canonical for proper morphisms, but now it seems that it can be made canonical in general. And this is a work in progress, just, just now in progress. Uh, uh, and hopefully this will be done. So and, and, probably- and Michael, in the, in the third last uh, jot, you, so just to make sure I understand that after this modification, there will never again be a problem. It's sort of, uh, that, that's what- uh, that... Yes, but uh, also it, it, it says that actually up to modification of B, it's canonical. Any yeah. further modification, will, will, the algorithm will work the same. Yes, great. So, so this gives you sort of relative onto reality. So uh, on the morphisms, on the morphism, it depends functorially. On the base, we don't have control. Uh, now, probably we'll have control on both, but uh, this is the next stage. Yeah, so for equivariant um, applications, we would like also to have control on, on the base. That's the main motivation to, to have control on the base. Uh, okay, uh, good. And now from now on, so I outlined what is the, um, uh, our final goal uh, for morphisms from now on, I'll only talk about, uh, about uh, the absolute case. Uh, the first paper, yeah, this, uh, uh, this one, uh, because it's simpler and it's the same algorithm, essentially the same algorithm. Okay, good. Now the plan of the talk is as follows. First of all, we'll discuss half of the talk or maybe a bit more classical resolution. 
And then uh, I'll briefly recall some notions of logarithmic geometry, and then we'll discuss logarithmic algorithm and actually just how one, uh, what one should modify in the usual algorithm to get the logarithmic, what are the differences, what are the similarities. Okay, so let's start with uh, the uh, usual methods for canonical uh, resolution. So all these methods are, uh, as I told, uh, built on Hironaka's framework. Uh, and uh, it's enough to work locally because uh, of canonicity, it glues automatically. So one of bonuses of proving stronger claim is that you can work locally. So everything is just computation with chars in local coordinates, no global geometry here. Uh, um, resolution is embedded. Uh, all these methods are embedded. One, first of all, embeds X into a manifold. By manifold, I always mean smooth variety. So one embeds into smooth variety by closed immersion. And then one works with a pair. Such immersion exists only locally, but we don't care because uh, our method is factorial. And then one works with a pair, an ambient space and a sub-manifold, so, so, sorry, sub-variety, sub-variety, something singular, sub-variety. And one looks for a modification which depends on this pair factorially with respect to all smooth morphisms. And uh, the uh, modification should modify the ambient manifold to another manifold. So with uh, a certain transform of X, it will be, for example, strict transform or another transform we'll discuss later, uh, actually will be a resolution X res of X. It, it's not the full, pull, pull, the full uh, pullback, it's a subscheme, yeah? Because we have also some copies of exceptional divisor in the full uh, pullback of X. Uh, okay, good. Uh, now, uh, Fantorial embedded resolutions embed implies Fantorial non-embedded because embedding is essentially unique uh, if dimension is minimal possible up to Italian local uh, constructions. Uh, so uh, this reduction to embedded is very brief. Now I would like to say that there are also other methods for to resolve singularities by uh, De Jong, for example, and Abramovich. Uh, they are not embedded in uh, no means. Uh, they also involve some log geometry in a bit different way, but but they, they are not they are not uh, they are not embedded. But all these factorial, which are known up to now, we are embedded. Okay, now what are the choices of this classical resolution? Again, uh, these are specific choices for this method and not for for others. But this is the only way how we know to resolve canonical. Uh, first of all, the class of modifications. We work with embedded variety, so variety. Uh, with ambient manifold. It should be, it should stay smooth throughout our algorithm. So the standard operation which keeps smoothness of a manifold a blow up of a sub manifold. If we blow up an arbitrary ideal, uh, we destroy smoothness very easily. If we blow up smooth sub manifold, uh, the blow up remains uh, smooth. So this algorithm only blows up sub manifolds. And notation will be like here. Uh, mi plus one is the blow up of mi along with i center, vi. Okay, and transforms. Uh, so our transforms of x will be uh, very simple. We'll just pull back and subtract some uh, multiple of exceptional divisor. Uh, this d will be some uh, weight or order in the sequel. We subtract some uh, number of copies of exceptional divisor, just this. It's not strict transform, it can be something larger, uh, but uh, it's all not also full pullback, it's a bit smaller, but in controllable way. Uh, now, choice of centers. How one would like to choose center? So the ideology is that ideally you would like to have some invariant which predicts which center to take. So formally this is achieved in the end, but invariant is complicated and not so geometric. But the first uh, primary part of this invariant is very geometric. It's called order. I'll describe it uh, in a couple of slides later. But the morally order is just uh, the degree, uh, the, the order of um, uh, minimal order of a uh, generator of this ideal at a point. And uh, it's very crude invariant, but uh, very successful for these uh, purposes. Uh, the history. Uh, to what loops the algorithm uh, encodes history uh, in uh, exceptional simple normal crossing divisor. Uh, it gets exceptional divisor larger and larger. It 
worry is that it's always simple normal crossing. And the number of components of this boundary at a point will be another primary invariant denoted S of X sometimes. So, uh, and the final part, the algorithm runs by induction. Uh, just uh, induction by dimension as follows. Uh, we consider uh, uh, our uh, ideal, we take its order D1, S1 is the number of components. And then we find something called uh, maximal content hypersurface. Again, we'll discuss later what it is and restrict to it. You restrict uh, our ideal in some smart way. When we take order of the restriction and uh, exceptional components there and so on. So uh, it runs by induction, which restricts uh, the problem to hypersurfaces in an equivalent way. And uh, the final invariant is something like uh, what is written here. Michael, can I ask um, when you say sure. number, in number four, when it, uh, uh, when it encodes history, you mean it encodes history only by remembering S of X. Like there's no additional history. Uh, it remembers also the order of components, but I'll uh, something similar. I'll be awake. I'll I'll ignore this. Yeah, but okay. In but this, something, in this, something similar, yeah, similar in blunt. Only only about uh, simple normal crossing divisor. Uh, some numeration of components which we won't use, and S of X, which I'll mention a bit. Now uh, an example. So and. The question why this history is needed at all. So we classical algorithm uh, encodes history in the boundary and with our choices, no history algorithm does, uh, exists. Uh, uh, no, no history algorithm does not exist at all. And this is very simple to see by example. So example of no progress. Let's take uh, just hypersurface in uh, A4 uh, given by X square minus Y ZT. So there is an action of S3 by permuting YZT. And uh, singular locus is just the union of uh, three coordinate X, Y, X, Z, X, T of, okay. Uh, I think, uh, uh, I think it's, uh, it's the union. Yeah, it should be the union of three, three axes through, through the origin, uh, which are permuted by. Uh, and uh, it's easy to see that the only center which contains zero and uh, which is equivalent and our algorithm can only blow up equivalent things uh, because of functionality is the zero itself. If I blow up the zero, I can just uh, compute everything very explicitly. And here is the formula. Uh, I don't think we should stop here, but it's just simple computation on charts of blow ups. And you see that you get a copy of exceptional, twice exceptional and the same equation. And uh, in fact, this means that after removing the exceptional, we are completely stuck. So if we don't remember that there is some exceptional divisor, we, we have no, no, no information at all. A more classical example, this is by, by, by Yarek, more classical example is the Whitney umbrella uh, with a pinch point. And again, you can see that pinch point, which is the worst point. Uh, if you just blow up the pinch point, you, 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 you have no progress. Uh, but, um, uh, maybe what I should say here, uh, in this, after blowing up, one of these excesses will be the historical guy. It will lie in the exceptional divisor. So it can be separated from the others and uh, there is no symmetry anymore. So using history, one can do progress. Uh, nevertheless, uh, using weighted blowups, uh, in uh, the work of 19, we constructed uh, what I prefer to call a dream algorithm, which iteratively blow up maximal environment locus. And uh, no history is needed and invariant drops each time. And invariant is relatively simple. It's still string of integers, but it's, uh, uh, it's more clear what it is. And, uh, but uh, this must use weighted blow ups and stacks. Okay, uh, good. So this is a tangential to our talk. I'll not go to details here. I'll talk about logarithmic stuff. Okay, uh, now the boundary. So after blow up, each point has a God given coordinate, the coordinate of exceptional divisor, of new exceptional divisor. So if we want to reduce symmetries of our situation, it's natural to take this coordinate as one of coordinates in, in any system of coordinates we'll work with because we want to break the symmetry and uh, somehow, yeah? And um, 
Uh, and Hironaka's uh, decision was to only consider such coordinate systems. So inductively for a sequence uh, as earlier of low ups, we define uh, accumulated boundaries, the premature fault boundary and the new one. And we insist that we always work with coordinates T1, Tn, which uh, can be used to describe the new, uh, the new um, center and also can describe uh, uh, the exceptional divisor by just uh, last uh, R coordinates. Uh, so this imposes restrictions on the choice of V, uh, serious restrictions. But because of these restrictions, the new boundary will be still simple normal crossing. So we, once again, we reduce our number of choices, but we insist in this way that the boundary is SNC all the time. And uh, boundary coordinates will be called exceptional or monomial. So we'll use a separate notation for them. Uh, okay, questions uh, about these uh, choices of structure? Okay, so good news. Uh, so canonical monomial, monomial coordinates, they indeed decrease choices and uh, they are used to, to avoid helps, uh, to avoid loops. And in addition, this extra structure of monomial coordinates can be used to accumulate the parts of I. We can start to split I to a product of non-monomial part and the part which is product of monomials. So IPO is the maximal ideal which cannot be factored uh, so that we cannot factor out anything monomial anymore. Uh, so in fact, we only want to decrease this IPO. So we want to, to make monomial part large and pure part small. Uh, bad news, which are actually the same uh, coin, but on other side, we must treat this exceptional divisor with care from now on. Yeah, so uh, it requires a special care. Uh, well, and we have less possibilities, so this is good and this is bad. We'll see so that sometimes it will be bad. Yeah, but okay, nothing to be done. Uh, now, many technical complications of classical algorithm, in fact, a result from bad separation of regular and exceptional coordinates. And the main thing is that both are used to define the order the primary invariant. We'll get to this uh, now. Okay, but before that, let me say, uh, now I started with very general description of ideas. Now let me be more and more concrete from one slide to another. So first of all, uh, principalization. So now once we define this uh, boundary and I, I explained, I hope at least some motivation to introduce it, uh, I would like to say that all algorithms, uh, known algorithms work completely algebraically with I. So we started with some X, we embedded it into M, we replace X by its ideal and we'll work very algebraically. So no geometric meaning will be from now on. So we'll uh, do such things to ideal that it becomes very non-radical uh, and uh, geometry is uh, sort of lost. Uh, so where is geometry of M and inside of it, we have I which is uh, uh, okay, which is dealt with algebraically. And we want to do the following principalization problem to solve the following principalization. We want to find a sequence of blow ups. So where the pullback of I N becomes monomial after N stages. So no pure part is left. It's just supported, it's just Invertible supported on exceptional device. So the magic is that the last non-empty strict transform of X, yeah, if in the end X is supported in exceptional divisor, we at some stage we blow up with the strict transform of X. We must blow up everything which lie above X. Yeah, we start with empty boundary and uh, all transform of X becomes in the boundary. It means that we blow up everything. And the last non empty strict transform of X is, uh, must be smooth and transversal to EL. It must be one of centers of the blow up sequence. So this is the magic and in fact, it's very simple. Yes, uh, ah, okay. Well, I wonder what the VI is. So, uh, maybe I'm not confused. Uh, I don't know what VI is, but I think you just said it in a word. VL is the center. Oh, it's sorry, yes, great, it's yes, center, yes. Uh, so XL must be the center which we blow up. Yes. Now, we, uh, any center is by, by, by our construction is smooth and transversal to, to the boundary. So at this stage, XL, uh, X just uh, must be smooth. So principalization is a stronger thing. It implies 
uh, embedded resolution. From now on, we talk only about principalization. Moreover, it's also, it, it even solves more. It even makes the boundary uh, um, uh, uh, restricted to Excel uh, SNC. So it, we, we resolve not just variety, we resolve log variety automatically, even if we did not ask. So it has some smell of log geometry. Uh, okay, now the, uh, what we profit from this is that ideals have some flexibility of algebraic operations, derivations, uh, as we are going now to use. Okay, order reductions. So uh, uh, what is the order? Uh, order is minimal order, order of ideal J is minimal order of elements uh, uh, inside J. For example, I'll not give formal definition, just example, which makes it completely clear. Order of X square minus Y Z square is two at the origin. And the order of X five plus Y seven and X cube Z cube is five because of this X to be five. So, so, so can I, can I, can I ask in advance? They, so you're, yes. so you'd said it earlier, you're going to give up on blowing up on smooth centers, but, and now you're going to blow up on along arbitrary closed sub schemes, but I'm guessing they're not going to be arbitrary. They'll always be weighted projective kinds of things that are no, 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 no. I am now, I, I'm talking about Hironaka's algorithm. Oh, okay. I, I only blow up smooth centers. Right. In but, but, it, but in, only in your centers. system, yes. But in your system, in, oh. in our system, it will be uh, a bit more general. We'll see. But I, first of all, I, I, I have to finish Hironaka's. Good. Makes sense. And Thanks. then I'll start to, yeah. But uh, in our, it will be more general, but not completely general. No way. Uh, and, and here are only smooth centers. Uh, so the primary invariant is the order of pure part. Monomial, we know what to do. So our enemy is pure part. We want to decrease pure part. So we want to decrease the order of pure part. Uh, now one works with so-called marked or weighted ideals, I comma D. So D should be viewed as weight, or in a sense, we want to work with I to power one over D. Yeah, it's a good intuition to what we really work with. Uh, one uses only blow ups along centers that the order is maximal possible. So center must lie in the I comma D singular, which is precisely points X of M where the order is uh, at least D. So we want uh, to, um, to work only with these uh, uh, points where the order is more than D. And uh, we, in such case, uh, it's automatically where the pullback of i can be divided by this power of exception. If we blow up ideal, uh, uh, blow up a center line in such locus, it easily follows that we can divide the pullback of i by uh, this power of exception. So our transform will always be just remove this power of exception. Uh, for example, we already saw such example with uh, Whitney umbrella with this x square minus y z t comma two, and when we could uh, divide by uh, by second power of exception, this was our transform. Okay, order reduction finds a sequence of blow ups, uh, which are ID admissible in this uh, in this sense, in this sense. And uh, so with the uh, uh, invent of the process, there is no more points where I n is d singular. So no more points where the order is d. So order drops below d. Uh, now, if we can do such a thing for any i and d, we can obtain principalization just by taking d equal one. So it's strong given principalization, and it's a very natural approach to principalization. Just kill order. Okay. Uh, now, uh, maybe one more remark. Why uh, uh, we still, uh, despite the fact that D equal order of IPO is the main case, why we consider general case? It uh, sort of karma of induction. Our ideal, uh, after restricting to a maximal contact, uh, becomes a different ideal, but it remembers its old, uh, its old order because our transform can only divide by order up to D because of uh, early life. So because of induction, we have to, to do a bit more general uh, situation here. We must prove that using weaker transforms, we still can uh, resolve. Uh, fortunately, this is just combinatorial complication with monomial part. So it's not uh, too much complication. 
Okay, now maximal contact, the main miracle of all this story. Uh, uh, the miracle which enables induction on dimension and the miracle which does not exist in characteristic P. Uh, so in the maximal order case, yeah, in uh, the case when D equals to order of IP, uh, it turns out that we can encode our problem by an equivalent problem in a smooth hypersurface called a hypersurface of maximal contact. We'll denote it H. And uh, there exists some ideal called coefficient ideal. I'll immediately define you these two things. Uh, so that when we restrict the ideal to H, uh, then uh, resolving of the new gadget is equivalent to the old gadget. Any blow up sequence of H, which resolves C of I, uh, induces a blow up sequence of uh, the original M, which resolves I, and vice versa. So these two problems are equivalent and by induction, it's enough to, to work on H. So we get a reduction of dimension. Uh, and here is the main example. So let's assume that I is just uh, given by one uh, uh, generator, a T to the D plus sum of AI T to D minus I. And uh, we, can we can avoid A1 term here. And uh, T is the first coordinate and the other coefficients uh, way depend on T2 to Tn. In such case, the maximal contact is just vanishing locus of T, T equals zero. And coefficient ideal is just, we take all these coefficients and consider each of them with the correct weight. So A2 is taken with weight two and AD is taken with weight D, yeah? But I want, somehow to combine them together. And the only way to combine them together is to take large enough power so that all these one half, one third, and one over D become integral numbers. So is I should take here LCM of the numbers from one to D or just to write a simpler D factorial, for example. In any case, the C of I has huge degree. So each reduction of uh, dimension costs us factorial of the previous uh, degree. So algorithm is not too much efficient, but uh, okay. Uh, now remark, why coefficient ideal? Uh, because if I just want to restrict I to H like here, when I restrict only the last coefficient, I lose a lot of information. No way that this encodes the original problem. Uh, but encoding all coefficients, restricting all coefficients with correct weights is a smart way to encode the original problem. Uh, and uh, no problem to achieve a one equal zero because we are in characteristic zero. In characteristic uh, P, this breaks completely and uh, nothing to be done, at least uh, what we know. Okay, and uh, this is an example. Now you can ask what to do in general. In general, uh, there is a, a way which uses derivation. So our next tool is derivations. So my tool for a choice-free description of the algorithm is to consider the derivation of i and its iteratives. Now, derivation of i is generated by i itself and derivations of all its elements with respect to all coordinates. Uh, a good thing about derivation is that it decreases the order of i precisely by one. And uh, well, it's a simple exercise on uh, formal series at a at point. And it con derivation provides conceptual way to define all basic ingredients uh, of algorithm excluding monomial ones, excluding combinatorial ones. So first of all, the order is the minimal D such that this derivation is trivial. It's just uh, the structure shift. Be each time it decreases the order by one. Uh, maximal contact is any hypersurface generated by T where T is a regular coordinate, which is element of order one in D minus first derivation. So in D minus first derivation, there are elements of order one. So any, any such element gives us a hypersurface, smooth hypersurface, which is touching as much as possible to our ideal. So this is the hypersurface of maximal contact. And third, the coefficient ideal, again, we just take uh, derivations and take weighted sum of derivations in a natural way. So this is the coefficient ideal. So uh, this description is completely choice free, except the choice of uh, maximal contact. So the only serious difficulty in proving canonicity of this algorithm is to show independence of the choice of maximal contact. But all the rest, I, did, I described uh, um, choice-free. Okay, uh, 
one remark uh, uh, which uh, now points towards what we are going uh, where model of logarithmic derivations d log is spanned by derivations of usual elements and uh, uh, logarithmic derivations of monomial variables uh, so uh, what is written here so uh, this model are precisely derivations which preserve e uh, but is present take e, uh, ideal of e to itself except preserve a boundary for almost all needs is much more easier to work with d log but why the original algorithm cannot do it for this following reason uh, the order of ideal is described by usual uh, der derivations and not by logarithmic ones and uh, because of this we must use usual derivations and we run into two complications so I'll be very brief about complications just to indicate where it comes from. Maybe we'll not spend time on describing how to solve them uh, because both these complications will not show up in logarithmic algorithm and I want to, to be in time with, log with logarithmic one. So first of all, uh, this uh, H produced by usual derivations uh, is not related to E in any way. So no relation. It might will be the case that uh, the maximal contact is not transversal to E. In such case, intersection of E with H can be singular and uh, can be bad and no way to restrict the boundary. So, uh, and we have to restrict all our problem, including the boundaries. So there is a uh, solution of this. One has to take, uh, to work with old boundary, new boundary. And this is the reason why this number of components of the boundary shows up in the primary invariant. So let me now uh, not go to details, but this is complication, it's solvable, it makes algorithm much longer and it complicates the invariants. Uh, second complication is that the order of i can be larger than d, but order of pure part can be smaller than d because of monomial uh, contribution to the order. And if this happens, we must work also with monomial part and uh, Again, there is some solution, uh, not too complicated, but uh, it makes at least the, the argument and uh, the reasoning and the uh, computer algorithm more complicated than needed. Uh, okay, good. Uh, now, uh, before going to algorithmic things, let's discuss what is the boundary. So typically, I always, before I started uh, to work with, with uh, resolution, I thought that boundary is a divisor. It's normal crossing divisor or something geometric. This is uh, incorrect, I think, at least for this problem. So unlike embedded uh, scheme X, which is a sub-scheme, I think that E is a logarithmic structure, uh, as I'm going to describe, but not, not really a divisor. We, we never use that it is a divisor. Right? And from, from, even from to reality, we have a map from M prime E prime to M E, but this map does not map E prime to E. Uh, pullback of E is embedded into E prime. So in, uh, exceptional divisor becomes larger and larger. It contains it, but in, uh, yeah, so it's not a from to reality of sub schemes, uh, but uh, the boundary actually can be described by the shift of monomials uh, or what is the same as a shift of uh, uh, elements of structure shift, which are units outside of the boundary. The monomial uh, defined monomial uh, defined by uh, by e. I define I denoted m of log e just symbolically. It's uh, uh, the intersection of units on the complement of e with the structure shift. So it's some submonoid of structure shifts. Uh, and uh, it gives a natural font reality, actually. Uh, now, and in fact, this is the shift uh, we use in our algorithm. We use it to factor, to principalize ideal, to factor out monomial fee pieces. And uh, we don't use anything else from E, in fact. Uh, locally, in this case, we shift splits as non-canonically, as uh, units times uh, free monoid generated by M1 up to MS by exceptional coordinates. It will not be the case anymore. But in this case, uh, uh, the splitting actually says that up to units, we can just work with exceptional coordinates. OK, now a brief discussion of logarithmic varieties. I'll have to be brief in order to, uh, so I sort of more or less assume 
basic, basic familiarity. So algorithmic variety consists of a variety and the sheaf of monoids uh, with a map to OX. So with the uh, invertible elements of this monoid are uh, precisely invertible elements of X. Morphism is a compatible pair. Uh, all examples which co cover our needs are X and uh, mon uh, sheaf of monomials which come from uh, divisors. So elements which are units outside of a, a divisor. And in such case, morphisms are just maps which, uh, uh, so the image of uh, uh, divisor downstairs is contained in divisor upstairs. Uh, now, many constructions of usual geometry, algebraic geometry, extend to log geometry. Uh, for example, one can define a sheaf of logarithmic uh, differentials is generated by usual differentials and logarithmic differentials of monomials, which are sort of elements like dm divided by m. So it's larger, we add the logarithmic derivations, uh, logarithmic di differentials. Okay, and uh, one can define, for example, notion of log smooth morphisms. It behaves similarly to classical one. It has a bit, bit different uh, concrete characterization, but in general, uh, uh, such morphisms uh, have locally free sheaves of relative differentials of expected rank. So, okay. Uh, also, it's worth to say that uh, log smooth varieties are just roidal varieties. So this is just a generalization of a, or extension of a known theory uh, to non smooth case. And uh, in particular, formally locally, uh, um, roidal varieties or log smooth varieties look like uh, a field, uh, formal powers, uh, formal series in a monoid and the T1, TL, where we view these TIs as regular coordinates and all elements of M, which is not free anymore. It can be non-free. Uh, and we call them monomial coordinates. And the principle which I prefer to, to spell as follows, we'll use monomial democracy. All elements of this M are equally good for us from now on. We don't have any canonical basis. And we don't care which element is irreducible or reducible. So every element of M is good for us, equally good. Okay, uh, well, maybe I'll uh, uh, only say that there is a notion of uh, toroidal morphisms and they correspond to log smooth morphisms between log, uh, log varieties. And uh, rather two very well-known uh, particular cases. One is semi-stable morphisms. Here is an example. And another is called uh, Kummer log et al covers. They correspond to the case when uh, mono, uh, monoid uh, upstairs is a submonoid of uh, M divided by D. So for example, uh, something like uh, spec C X Y going to spec C X square X Y Y square, a cover of orbifold by uh, by plane, uh, it's uh, non-flat morphism, but it is uh, log et al. Okay. So what's the, what are the what are the monoids in the, for that example? Uh, here, uh, this one is free, and this one is generated by two zero one one and zero two. Hmm. Okay. Two zero one one zero two. So, okay, so, okay. so, so, Michael, is the game you're going to play? So, you let's say you have a, an X, you have a variety, it's singular. Maybe you even have something you're calling the boundary, which is a closed subset. So, you'll take the singular locus and the, and the boundary, and you'll have a log structure as a result from that. And you're going to take this log structure. It's not toroidal, and you're going to, but you're going to tell me some stuff to do. So, it'll end up being toroidal. Is that, okay. Is that uh, okay? Okay, let's. Uh, so, I think I, I finished this. Uh brief excourse to general theory. Now I am returning to algorithms. So yeah, so your question is about algorithm, yeah? Yeah. So what, what, what I'm doing, so, okay. Uh, well. Uh, Sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, maybe maybe I just want, just last last remark, okay? And before I go into this, uh, so uh, the remark is here. So a most interesting feature of new algorithm is from reality with respect to all uh, log smooth morphisms, including log et al cover, Kummer log et al covers. 
So for example, if I take extract root of monomial coordinate, it is uh, log et al. And my algorithm, unlike uh, Hironaka's algorithm, will be uh, functorial with respect to such things. Branch cover, but uh, which branched over the toroidal divisor. And this is a huge uh, difference. Yeah, you cannot expect such a thing from, we'll see what it costs and what it requires from the algorithm. So now let's go to the algorithm. Uh, okay, so first of all, main results, yeah. Uh, ignoring orbifold aspect, which I keep to the last slide, our main result is as follows. Given a toroidal variety X with an ideal inside, a, inside OX, there exists a sequence of admissible blowings up. I have to explain what it is, I'll explain later. Uh, of toroidal varieties, a sequence XN goes to, uh, goes to X, such that the pullback ideal is monomial. Uh, sequence is compatible with log, log smooth morphism x prime to x. Okay, so this is a clear analog of uh, uh, the old situation. In all situation, uh, we had this E, which encoded logarithmic structure here. Just it's uh, from the start is given. Uh, uh, earlier, our um, logarithmic structure was only given by free monomials, and here is is general. So it's log smooth, but the log no restriction on uh, mono, on monoids. This may be the main difference. Uh, as in the classical situation, this implies that any logarithmic variety, integral log variety Z, possess a modification Z rest to Z, such that Z rest is log smooth, and this is functorial with respect to all log smooth morphisms. So, can, can I ask yeah. so, so, this, so in the first one, what is it? So a toroidal variety means toroidal embedding means, or what is a toroidal variety? Mean? Yes, yes, yes. Just log smooth, uh, toroidal variety or log smooth variety. As you, right. So, uh, it's already, so the first one is already log smooth. Uh, but, only, yes. Uh, even to and, begin with. Uh, and, yes. Uh, but it's principalization. One, got it. Principalization of ideal is always on log manifold. Or right. On manifold, or here, log manifold. Now, it implies, this guy implies embedded resolution. And the embedded implies non-embedded, yeah? Just usual implication as in classical situation. So if I am given integral log variety Z, locally I can embed it into a toroidal variety by a strict uh, closed immersion. And then I do principalization of ideal of this Z inside the uh, ambient X. Oh, so sorry, the I in the first part, right, X is nice and twirdle, but the I is some yes. crazy thing. Yes. But the I is yes. some crazy, I, is arbitrary I, crazy. I understand what confused you. Be, <laughs> I used M to de denote manifold, but now I have um, monoids and monomial structures and I'm not allowed to use M anymore. I understand. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. You are absolutely right. This time X is the ambient guy and Z is the singular guy. Yes. Uh, okay, so this is just as in classical situation and uh, our question is to do log principalization. Uh, now the method. Uh, so I have uh, uh, eight minutes and only four slides, uh, but uh, uh, it turns out that adjustment, if we spell it correctly, is very simple. It's sort of log adjust anything which you have. So how it goes. Uh, so if you remember, we had three main ingredients expressed uh, using derivations. So I put D log anywhere and I got adjustments of all three basic ingredients. Just D log instead of D and we are done. So log order is the minimal D such where D log of IX becomes trivial. A maximal contact is any H given by T which is regular coordinate with respect to D minus one. So this H is toroidal, yeah? It's uh, given by, uh, so any, any such regular T, it's vanishing locus is a log smooth uh, sub uh, And the coefficient ideal again is given by such a sum, uh, weighted sum of uh, log derivations. Uh, now a bit uh, um, more, yes. What if all the coordinates are log coordinates? Uh, what if all coordinates are log coordinates? Uh, in such case, okay, it's a good question, but we'll, we'll get to it, okay? Okay. Uh, 
we will see, there is something unexpected. You, you, you pointed to one unexpected thing, but okay, we, we'll see some unexpected corollary of this log order. And okay, so in addition, uh, J is uh, called ID admissible if two, two com uh, conditions hold. First of all, uh, I is contained in J to the D. This is needed to be able to define the uh, transform, this transform. So instead of saying that it lies in some log order locus, whatever, I just claim that uh, request, require that I is contained in J to the D. And second, J is generated by a few regular coordinates and a set of monomial coordinates I don't care for at all. So we have monomial democracy, any set of monomial coordinates is fine. So morally such J is obtained as intersections of two different walls. It's a sub variety, a sub, a, a, a log sub, sub manifold given by vanishing of T1, TL and the monomial ideal generated by M1, MR and monomial can be any monomial, okay? Uh, now, precisely to Johan's question, infinite log order. So we have one thing which never happened before. Uh, log order of usual coordinates is one, but log order of uh, monomial coordinates is infinite because uh, we, are not we are not dropping under log derivations. Actually, we are eigen uh, things of, uh, of log derivations. Our log derivation is M times D over DM. So D over, uh, so other derivations will kill it and D, M times D, uh, yeah, just keeps it. So uh, uh, the main functionality, uh, main uh, novelty, uh, okay, let's say you can think that this is a bug, but actually it's a very interesting feature. And this is the only feature which makes it possible to have functionality with respect to Kummer covers. Kummer cover can be obtained by extracting root of M, for example. Uh, if my algorithm is compatible with such operation, like uh, with such a cover, like extracting root of M, uh, the order uh, of M upstairs and downstairs should be the same. And the only way to achieve it is to declare it to be infinite, like the order of zero. So unlike usual situation, I have plenty of elements which have infinite log order. And uh, what does it mean for algorithm? It means that uh, we are not dealt with by other, we are dealt with combinatorially and uh, that's it. So uh, we do have to do something special when log order is infinite. And this is done as follows. Uh, just start with blowing up. If the log order is infinite, consider minimal monomial ideal, which contains I. It is not trivial just because the log order is infinite uh, and blow it up. For example, if I is given by uh, a few elements uh, like sum of M I T to the I, take ideal generated by all these monomial coefficients, blow up this ideal and uh, remove its transform. So this single toroidal blow ups makes log order finite. This is a result uh, due to Collar. In fact, it was discovered a few years before by Collar. He asked how much I can improve by toroidal blow up, by monomial blow up, how much I can improve singularity. And he said that I can, achieve a situation that no log strata is contained in the locus of I. This is precisely what we get here. So in Johan's question, if uh, I have only monomial uh, coordinates, my log order is automatically infinite. So this, is, this will be dealt with by such a blow up. Uh, okay, uh, now let's, uh, uh, up to this initial cleaning stage, we call it initial cleaning. Uh, everything is much simpler. Uh, we avoid both complications uh, because uh, our log order computes precisely, uh, log derivations compute the log order. Uh, so, and it separates coordinates much better. Uh, monomial ones are dealt with uh, here and uh, the other one show up when we pass to um, maximal contact. Uh, yeah, that's what I say. We completely separate uh, um, log order and combinatorics. Uh, okay, and the invariant also becomes much simpler. It's just uh, a string of numbers, dn up to d1, where if you first last guy is, is a zero or uh, infinity. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, or be false. Well, now uh, the last thing uh, I should uh, discuss is why do we have to worry for, I, I said it from the beginning, uh, if this indeed, if you are familiar with, uh, a bit familiar with log geometry, this really looks very simple, where is the cheating? So there is one thing I uh, uh, kept to the last uh, few minutes. Uh, our algorithm does not distinguish monomials at all, as I explained, yeah, because of log order, because of functionality, any reason you, you, you like. And because of this, uh, it sometimes uh, uh, insists to blow up a fractional power of monomial. So to be able to formalize this, we must first of all to introduce fractional powers. We must make a perfect sense of it. We must extend our tools of blowups, uh, weighted blowups. So I'm going now to explain what actually, what are the complications because of this, of this thing. Uh, so um, the idea is that, okay, in principle, uh, if uh, uh, my algorithm is uh, compatible with Kummer covers, why not to extract the root of M and walk upstairs where this M to one over D is a, an actual monomial. Uh, and then uh, divide back to obtain a algorithm uh, downstairs. So this is good, but when we try to do it and divide back by the Galo group of the cover, we get something which is not log smooth. So we can only divide up to keeping some orbifold structure, which keeps things log smooth. So in this way, we introduce a new operation called Kummer blow up. It blow ups an ideal uh, like, uh, like this, but with fractional powers of monomials. And it has, uh, it can be defined uh, locally in Kummer topology, but uh, on downstairs, it produces something non-representable in general. So, so can I, so is this, should I say, interpret this as you're taking you, the thing you're working on and you're add, adding some root stackiness along some divisors of a very- It's uh, all, in, in, par in particular case, it will add your root stack, yeah. And then the result in, in, in general, yeah, you can, you can, yeah, but okay, we, we, we give different characterization of this. It's not in this talk. I have just one more slide. Uh, so I did not prepare details of this, but uh, okay, we, we, we describe it as a stack approach. So you consider some algebra, you take its approach, but when you divide by GM, you divide uh, in stack theoretic way. So this is the description. Right. So root stack can be particular case of such an operation. Okay, so an example, just one example and I'm done. I'm a bit over time, but maybe we started two minutes later. So maybe it's still okay. And I, I should say, I get, to, I get to make the rules, I guess. So this is, uh, so I think we started five minutes late if I, I declare that. Uh, okay, anyway, it's last slide. So I, yeah. Uh, so uh, a simple example, which is very, uh, analogous to usual one, let's consider X, which is spec of C, uh, T and M. M is a monomial coordinate and T is usual coordinate. So log structure is given by just by uh, the X, one X. And I is T square minus M square. Uh, log order is two. And uh, it's easy to compute everything. Ma maximal contact is V of T. And uh, uh, in uh, C of I, we have, uh, uh, coefficient ideal restricted to H will be M square comma two. It's just the same as in the usual situation. And the other reduction in such case will blow up M, M square to one half because of this two. So it, it uh, blows up M and uh, other reduction blows up uh, T comma M. So on the original, we will blow up uh, T comma M. So we, this, is, this is just, you feel no difference. Uh, but what if we take T square minus M? So the same situation, but this, this X is a Kummer cover of the guy which I'm taking now. Uh, and uh, in such case, the log order is still two because log order of M is infinite. Yeah, just remember in usual situation, I would say log order is one and I restrict to hyperplane M equals zero. 
which is bad hyperplane. It's not a uh, normal crossing to be exceptional divisor. Now I'm not allowed to do it just because of log order. I, from, from scratch, I know it's not allowed. M is in fact has infinite order. You must walk with T. And then the restriction still will be M comma two. But this, this time not M squared, just M comma two. And the algorithm insists to blow up M to one half. And uh, the blow up which we have to do is T comma M to one half. So you can really extract a square root of M, obtain a cover where ideal looks like this, perform a blow up there, but when dividing back, you will get something which is uh, non-smooth. So the only way to realize this weighted blow up as something uh, log smooth is to consider these non-representable uh, Kummer blow ups. And the coarse model space will be blow up of T square comma M. It's, and uh, it's not, a, so in, in a way you, you would get coarse model space which is not log smooth and then you cannot proceed. So uh, since we insist to walk uh, in the wo world of log smooth things, we must uh, extend our category to stacks. On the other hand, since we, everything we are doing is uh, compatible with the covers, it's not real complication. We, anyway, we can walk it locally. So despite the fact that we get stack, our life is not more complicated because the algorithm uh, is constructed locally. So uh, this is not real uh, complication. And uh, uh, last remark is that generally, more generally, one can define weighted blow up of a few coordinates with some weights in AN. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, weighted blow up of this is coarse space of a non-representable modification, which we call uh, fine or sticky weighted blow up. And such guys were used to construct dream algorithm in the walk in 90. And uh, that's it. Yeah, thank you.